Okay, guys, I've uh, applied the uh, small little bridge. You can just see the, the loop here. That, that was the uh, CH uh, connection that I had to go to positive. Um, so now if I get this, put them in here. I'll turn on the uh, test bench. Uh, oh. Plug it in first. You've got one of these little Ming heat, I mean DC, DC converters that I'm just feeding this with. Um, and you can see, straight away get two uh, two red lights. I f fashioned a gap in the case which that went okay. Um, but I'm a bit of a nerd, I got excited so I am uh, kind of just, yeah, wedged them in there. What would have been great is if um, the 8 pin riser hadn't have been so tall. Um, I could have soldered this board direct on and then maybe just cut a small slit in there and that would look great. I think just um, putting that aside there. Um, but as it is, it's cracking. All the connections are good. Um, so. I cracked it slightly, so no mind, not the worst thing in the world. So yeah, so what you end up is that, which you can just pop into your uh, EP ever. Now I'm not sure if there's other things out there are, that are um, RS-485, those will work. Um, so that's the hardware component of it. Uh, what you do then have is the standard monitoring software, uh, which as I've mentioned, I'll, the link is below. Um, and then what you need to do is set up a virtual COM port and then what that basically does is it'll create a virtual COM port on your machine that is, doesn't exist so um, COM10 say um, and then what you'll do is COM10 then redirects everything to a specific IP which is the IP that you've assigned here or you've got assigned if you're using DCP um, and you need to configure port 23. Now, there's a few different ways of doing it, but there is um, some free software. So what I'm going to do is I'll cut the video to the desktop and I'll configure that up, um, and then we'll go through and then we'll show what the it looks like connected up. Okay, guys, I've um, been working on the software side of things. I, I should say working on. It. I've not written it, but. Uh, trying to research and, and find something which I thought should be a simple problem but it's actually took quite a while so there's uh, there's two routes to go for this um, there's one route which is an application called COM2TCP this installed worked brilliant worked straight away no problems at all very very simple you download this you specify the IP you go into the port so in my case it was 192.168.0.116 port 23 right click and choose connect and brilliant worked flawlessly no problem at all um, I didn't look into how you install as a service but I presume it must have that for 39 bucks but um, brilliant worked great um, but it's 39 bucks which I've got to admit is a bit steep for something like this um, it's a bit niche and I feel like they're cashing in a bit uh, which is a shame um, the other popular option is a combination of two programs written by the same guy um, COM0COM and COM2TCP now the COM0COM had been uh, in use and around for quite some time um, but there was a lot of issues with um, signing and such like so there was an older version um, 222 which you could use um, but that didn't prove successful for me not sure if it's a Windows 10 thing or something but um, what I did find was a version which has been compiled um, which they've managed to include a signed driver now what I will say is use at your risk you know um, this is the page, I'll put a link down below um, I'm using the 64-bit version of Windows 10 as I mentioned um, so I use this version um, 
admittedly it's from 2012 but it's the version 3 of the software um, when I installed that um, in conjunction with then COM2 TCP 1.3 that worked great again I'll have the direct links of what I used um, below in the description um, so what you need to do is you can go through and install so we'll step through the install of uh, com0 com um, best not to set up the pairs straight away just let it do the shortcut menus and nothing else um, it is most likely you, you will get a warning um, it's, I've already installed it once you won't get it but you'll get a, a driver signing one even though they're signed it'll say ok I'm not sure what these are but just click ok if it wasn't test signed then you wouldn't get anything it would just fail and you've got to put your system into test mode and it's a right pain and you don't want to run it permanently like that so I'd recommend you use this version and um, that should work we'll not launch the setup we'll click finish and um, what we'll do is we'll go to all applications and then under com0 com and there's the setup command prompt so we're going to right click on that go to more and we'll run that as administrator we say yep we want to run that so at this point if we type list there's no com ports okay so what we want to do is we want to install a virtual com port and, and what this does is it works in pairs so um, whatever you pipe into one com port it'll go through the other um, this is important because I've struggled on with this because you try and create a virtual com port and then connect to it and its port's always in busy and what you need to do is use the other port so what we're going to do is if it's going to let me copy and paste this because I don't want to type it out okay well too many times too many times okay so if you use this syntax which is install port name equal com12 you can use any free com port I'm just picked out port 12 arbitrarily there um, actually I'll tell you what I shall use port 30 because I used 12 earlier earlier testing so in case it's in you still and then you've got the other port name pair um, CNBC B0 which is fine so we'll do that and you'll notice they're logged in as use um, so we do an update ok and then and that just updates the Windows device manager with the ports that you've configured. Now if you do a list you'll see those two ports configured. If you hadn't done the COM13 it would have been configured as this name which is not really a friendly name so we, we've got COM13. So then what we want to do is on the COM to TCP we want to go into that folder and if you click on the, the bar here and just type in CMD it'll bring up this prompt the command prompt saves navigating the folders okay so inside this folder as you saw there's the one executable in a readme farm so what we're going to do is we're going to run that one executable we're going to use the board rate of um, 115 200 um, 11, 11 50 200 um, ignore the JSR telnet we're going to configure it to point to the one of the named um, pairs we did and then the target of that's going to be the IP address which is the 8266 that we've uh, flashed up and that's going to be port 23 so if we do that and then you should get to see that's connected ok ok in out start DSR off so then what we can do is we can launch the solar station um, and you'll notice it's automatically populated with COM13 um, we can click the plus for add station um, we're going to select COM13 even though the port's already there it's fine what we'll do is we'll not configure then any of the information but we'll do that and then if we do start monitor there you go now there's something funny going on that I've noticed it's only partial information coming in but it is kind of working and bringing in some of the, the voltages so I need to do maybe a little bit of tweaking but it's getting late um, so I'll continue to to tweak that but it is connecting um, one thing I have noticed is that it's uh, 
was listing a, a, a couple of errors in here. Um, last time I did it, but at the moment it's just the day, so. so excuse me, maybe that's just something that needs tweaked, shall we say. I think I've actually got two instances going which actually may account for some of the errors. Um, but yeah, occasionally you do get these um, operation failed. Um, not constantly, but just occasionally. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how it works. Um, what I will do is, just as a demonstration, if I remove that port, unfortunately I'll remove it twice and then confirm, and then OK, so that's clean. Um, what we do have is the other application. Um, which I may have already removed. So what we'll do is we'll go through installing the other application that I mentioned. Um, the com to TCP. So I'll download this. Yep, we're going to run that. Once you to restart, but it can actually get away with it. Um, so we can use com to TCP. Now, okay, it doesn't want to move. Okay, that's fine. I'll I'll not fight it. Um, so, we're going to change this to one one six. It's one of these programs, I, I don't know why the idea, it feels the need to do the little graphic. In all honesty, there's no need at all. Um, so we click connect. This thing's now connected. COM4. Um, if we fire up this guy, COM4 is already there. Do the same as we did previously. OK, exit that. And we start. And you can see, it just pulls everything in. It's nice, it works. Yes, I've got a, <laughs> a battery with an extremely low charge connected, um, but it's just for testing. Um, and that works great. I'm just not worth paying the 39 bucks, so I'm going to stick with the other solution. Um, and I think it's maybe it's just that DSR parameter or something like that. But it is getting connectivity, which is the important thing, and it's reproducible, which is which is good. So, okay, hope that's been of help to you guys. So, um, yeah, feel free to leave comments below, subscribe. Thanks very much. Okay, just a quick update. Sorry, the video was finished, but um, it was bugging us the fact that I only got partial information. So, just did some uh, quick tinkering. Um, and it wasn't the DSR option, it was the Telnet option. Um, this is not needed. So the correct syntax would be this, um, and then, as per before, that allows you to then connect um, COM13. All the information is populated, brilliant working, um, and allows full control of the load status and such like, um, which is great. Um, you know, it's a teeny delay there because it sets it, it needs to pull it the next time it goes around um, but I've just it's really looked and it is set so it's just great and that's working okay cheers guys